right for traffic when exiting. Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, April 20th. The time right now is 10.14 a.m. and the temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. I'm here on Queen Street East in the Leslieville neighborhood. And that was the 501 Queen Street streetcar that I was just on. And I'm currently walking east along the north side of Queen Street. And the plan for this one is to go for a walk up one of Toronto's most unique residential streets. And that would be Craven Road. And this is a walk that's been suggested by a couple of viewers over the past few weeks. So I thought, since I didn't really have any other ideas for today, I should come out and explore this street. And full disclosure, I think this would be my first time going up the entire length of the street before. There's Jonathan Ashbridge Park. And just to the south of here is Lake Ontario. And this here is Ashdale Avenue. So Craven Road will be one block to the east of Ashdale. However, the two streets are kind of intertwined. I'm just going to take a quick peek up Ashdale. as the back side of these houses on the right go right up to the west side of Craven Road, as you'll see quite shortly. And that's one of the reasons that makes Craven Road so unique. And here we go, Craven Road. The next major street to the east of here coming up will be Coxwell. And that'll signify the end of the Leslieville neighborhood and the start of the beaches. So the west side of the street is lined by what is the longest municipally maintained fence in the city of Toronto. And there is also the largest concentration of detached 500 square foot or less homes in the city of Toronto on this street. And this is a newer addition. This one 5 Craven Road was completed back in 2013. That is 1,500 square feet. 
And back then, that was listed for 889000 I would imagine that would be much more in 2021 figures. What's also unique about the street is no two homes are the same. It looks like I might have picked a bad time <laughs> as they're doing some landscaping maintenance, it looks like. So originally, the street was a laneway called Erie Terrace. There's some of the bigger homes on the street. And it had a reputation as being something of a slum back in the 1920s. And the street that runs parallel to this Ashdale was considerably more upscale back then. And in the 20s, the city expropriated part of the backyards of these properties on Ashdale. And they expanded the street from, I think, 11 feet to 33 feet in width. And at that time, they also required plumbing and sewage hookups for all the properties on the new Craven Road, formerly Erie Terrace. And a lot of the residents couldn't afford that. So they were driven out. I should be able to get ahead of this maintenance crew here. Hopefully we can enjoy some more quiet along the street. Here is Dundas Street East. There's a home for sale, 153. And that one is going for 1.4 million. I did a walk along Dundas Street East not too long ago. So a lot of these would have been built as worker cottage style homes. This thing seems to be leaning quite a bit.
I'm not quite sure what this is commemorating. I would guess it has something to do with this property here. That's kind of neat. This one looks kind of like the Wellesley cottages that you'd find over in Cabbage Town. So this initial stretch of Craven Road from Queen Street up to where it ends at Monarch Park, or rather the rail tracks, should be about one and a half kilometers. And once I'm north of the rail tracks, I'll be out of Leslieville. And I'll try to navigate my way up to Danforth Avenue and finish somewhere around Coxwell Station. And coming up at Girard should be Little India. This is a very modern look. It's almost reminiscent of what you'd see in Japan. There's a house in Kensington Market that's kind of like that. So this would be Gerard. Some interesting street art around these buildings. Welcome to Little India. And Craven continues. I think some have dubbed 
Craven Road as Tiny Town before. Here's one that sold. 527. And one of the issues with the street widening was back then normally they would offload that bill to the residents of the street. However, given that this was a poor street in terms of its demographic and there were no homes on the other side of the street to share the cost with, the owners that were here were burdened with a higher bill for doing that and I think that delayed a lot of the work. The city originally planned on widening it back in 1911 but they didn't get that done until the early 20s. I like this one here at 577. kind of wish there was no street parking, at least for the sake of this video, <laughs> it would make things a lot easier. I'm either on the sidewalk here, up close to these homes, or if I walk down the other side of the street, the cars are in the way. Oh, here's one for sale that I didn't catch on my way over. 617. Craven Road, oh, sold over asking. Fairfold Avenue. Sign says no exit, but I think there's a path that runs along the rail tracks that I'll be able to take in either direction. One, if I go left, that should take me over to a tunnel that'll lead me up into Monarch Park. Or if I go right, that'll take me over to Coxwell Avenue. So these are the rail tracks coming up ahead here. And this one is called Mini Craven. 
and this sits on the site of a house that was used as a drug lab. And believe it or not, that home is supposed to only be 566 square feet. Not sure if I read that correctly or not. I guess this has to be a two-way street at the end here, otherwise how would cars ever get out? And here's the rail tracks. So this is where Craven Road gets severed. There's Monarch Stadium on the other side. So I have a bit of a choice to make. I could go this way and take that to a tunnel that'll lead me up through Monarch Park, but I think it'll be quicker if I just go to the west here over to Coxwell and I can find my way over to where Craven Road resumes. There's an interesting spot for your garage. It'd be kind of neat if a GO train ripped through right now, but that doesn't seem to be happening. So every time I've walked down Coxwell, I've always seen the staircase and kind of wondered where it led to, but that mystery has just been solved. I'm sure people that know this area well are probably thinking I'm a dummy right now for not knowing this. It's Coxwell. I recorded a video about a month ago, maybe, that went down Coxwell, but... That was on the northern half. So that didn't cover this part. It is windy. And tonight we're supposed to get some snow. Love you to the moon and back. So I was hoping to do a live stream later tonight. I couldn't do one yesterday as the Rogers network was down. 
I didn't get service on my phone till after 8 p.m. Well, that's the phone I use just for streaming. Let's look towards Monarch, Monarch Park Collegiate. I started saying it and then I thought, maybe I should read the sign to get it right. And this here is Hanson Street. So I should be able to get back on Craven Road. Although Ashdale Avenue, the street that runs parallel to Craven Road, has a different name. Or rather, the stretch that runs parallel to it, north of Monarch Park, has a different name. That's a really cute house. So that'll take you north up to the Danforth. There's Monarch Park Collegiate. And Monarch Park right next door. I'll have to do a walk that incorporates that park. I've done a live stream there. I probably just should have gone through it on this walk. But maybe I could do something that connects this to Withrow Park or Greenwood Park. I'll figure something out. But here we go, back to Craven Road, although this time there's no continuous municipal fence along the west side, although you can tell it still used to be an alley. And the road that runs parallel to it is Park Mount Road. Look at that. I'm getting some more Japan vibes. So that's actually two homes there. And here's a home for sale coming up. And this guy is going for 1.2 million. 
I would have guessed more than that. Apparently it's 1,100 to 1,500 square feet, according to the listing I am glancing at. This must be the shortest street in Toronto, Mount Joy Avenue, unless it continues on over on the other side there. Yes, it does. And here we go. This should be Danforth Village. To the west of here would be Greek Town. The Danny. Danforth Mosaic Business Improvement Area. So I could walk west over to Greenwood Station. But let's just go east over to Coxwell. I do have to get home as I have an appointment to get my shot early this afternoon. That's one of the reasons why I'm trying to squeeze this walk in a bit earlier. I'd like to get this one done, get my shot, and then weather or energy permitting, maybe I'll do a live stream. It's back to Coxwell. Since I'm about to pop into the subway, let me just put the mask on carefully while not dropping the camera.
and I'm starting to think I had a brain fart. I thought there was a subway station here, but I was wrong. <laughs> it's early in the morning, folks. It is early in the morning. At least for me it is. I thought I did a walk along Coxwell before, but I guess I didn't. So we are at Danforth and Coxwell now. And you know what? That's fine. I'm kind of hungry, and there's a subway right here. So I'm going to go in and grab myself a sandwich and eat it at the park across the street. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.